how it feels losing everyone. A free written video from Giga. We're back on that free written reactions, man. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna catch up. Let's see what he has to say though. Fantasy World, mm. Heroes Party, Adventurers Guild, Magic Spells, Demon Lord, Demon Lord, Demon Lord. Oh, Lord! He all the isekai elements, a lot of demon yeah, lords. Fantasy stories have become the McDonald's chicken nugget of the anime world. Now, don't get me wrong, I love myself some cheeky nuggets, but you can be damn sure my body is crying the morning after I stumble into McDonald's at 1 a.m. intoxicated. But dirt, that bite at 1 a.m. is heavenly. Even if you're gonna regret it, you know, five hours later, it's still heavenly. I think 20 nugs sounds like a perfectly reasonable yeah. amount of food to consume right now. And it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it always is. Even if we exclude the. the Isekai <laughs> genre. It feels like every world is set in the same basic Billy's first DD. Yo, this right here, this map, you never know what city this is. Is this Konosuba? Is this Attack on Titan? Is this, you know, if you look at an Isekai map, I swear to God, they reuse this template over and over again. Billy's first DD campaign with only slight variations here and there. Like, every <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Look at this. Did you see that? Did you see all the characters? Look at the character designs. At a certain point, they all become to look a little bit of the same. Well, this is done by hair color-ish, but I think, like, this, like, black-haired, like, main character's type, like Kirito, right? It's, like, the most popular template. Very slight variations here and there. Yeah, like, 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 right over there, right over there, right over here. This guy, right? Here and there. This guy, this guy, like, this design right here, right here. This is, like, the most, hey, ReZero main character, but yeah. Very, very, very over. Then again, you have fucking Overlord right here. Just a fucking skeleton. Yeah. Like every so often, we do get something unique. Like, um, mm. what's, what's the name again? You know, the fantasy anime with that skull. Inukai-san's dog. Skull guy. No, 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 no. Like the, the skull. Oh, Overlord. Overlord. Skull guy was one of the main characters. Yeah. No, no, the other skull guy. What? No, no. It had a skull guy and there was red hair. Are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Magus Bride. Oh, fuck. I, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, my God. Yeah, there was a skull guy there, too. Oh. It was Magus baited. <laughs> so to me, it would be a complete surprise if I found a story that had all these usual elements present and yet somehow immediately twisted it in a way I'd never seen before while stamping out an emotionally poignant, hard-hitting tale that nigh or near brought a tear to my eye within one chapter. But that I think you do this by introducing a show that's already completed. As in, the Demon Lord is defeated and now it's just a new game plus journey of Freerun wandering around, just experiencing existential crisis of everyone that she loves just dying around That's exactly her. what Soso no Freerun did. Yeah. Freerun is one of the most refreshing fantasy stories I've read in a very long time. But before we jump to this fantasy world, you don't Hashtag even need to ad? travel far to try snacks from a faraway land. Thanks oh? to our friends over at Boxu. Today's sponsor, Boxu's monthly... You know what to do. Hashtag ad. Go use the discount code. Okay, back to the regular scheduled content. Or free run beyond journeys in if you want the English name or free run at the funeral if you want the direct translated name. Wait, 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 wait. Free run the funeral? Free run at the f This series? That's what it translates to? It kind of makes sense. I mean, the first episode is like, you know, we're, we're at the funeral of like Himmel and shit. Free run if you want the direct translated name. Or free run and the group of dickheads if you want my name. This is still the world of Billy's first DD campaign, but we actually begin at the end of his campaign. Because you see, our hero party has just gotten back from defeating the demon lord. You have mm. your usual suspects in the party returning home. There's the hero, the priest, the warrior, and the elf mage. Free run. Our main character for this story, as they reminisce over the journey they've just had, they're greeted by a meteor shower that comes once every 50 years. And while they share an intimate moment, they make a promise to catch the next one together in a better place. They did. They actually did. The guys wonder if they're even going to be alive to see the next one by the time it comes around. And Free Ren's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll see you next weekend. To her 50 years, like, all right, I'll see you in 50 years. But it's like, yo, what the fuck? I'm gonna be like turned into like a midget baldy after t by the time you come back. Smell you later, losers. See you next Bye. Tuesday. Half a century passes in the blink of an eye, and when she returns, she once again reunites with the legendary hero Himmel, the one who defeated the Demon Lord. But he's bald now. Once the most powerful man on earth, now looks like that <laughs> fucking old guy in every anime. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, apparently, people are saying that like his hair went away because like um Himmel kept the like a, there's like an evil artifact. That he kept in his drawer, so because of that, he died before a high turn and became bald. I don't know if that's a meme. Fancy for a living. Yeah, he may have defeated the demon lord, but he can't defeat time, baby, because... Is he truly the strongest being in the world, though? They just, he, Giguk just said, Himel was the strongest person in the world. Damn, time got hands. Reunited with the old gang, they once again go on one last adventure to see the breathtaking meteor shower before Himmel eventually passes Dies. away. 
free run at the funeral. Huh? 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 <laughs> and she seems like the same stoic, apathetic person she was before. Out of nowhere, she breaks down. See, they spent 10 years together, which is an absolute minuscule amount of time for an elf. But Wait, only 10 years? I guess the journey to that place, I mean, they did say that journey to the demon castle or something in, in the northern w continent, it did take 10 years. That's what they were going. But for a human, it's anything but. Himmel saw her as a dear friend, someone who he shared a once in a lifetime experience with, who he spent a fair portion of his life and time in companionship with. But to Freerun, Himmel was just another acquaintance she spent a bit of time It was just like an NPC. To Freerun, she's like, I, I've met so many emails in my life. Who are you? I'm with. One who she thought she would have plenty of time to get to know better and grow closer to. And that's why she cries. Did she want to get closer and know better? I thought, maybe it's just my assumption, but I thought Freerun had this um, subconscious barrier that she puts up. Not, not, met, not literally, but like metaphorically, where she, can't, she doesn't want to get close to people because she's aware that her lifespan is not the same as a normal human. So it's going to hurt a lot if people get close and they die. So that's why I thought she puts people off in a distance, like subconsciously like that. But if it's actually the case that she thought that I have enough time to get to know this guy and in the future, that's kind of that's kind of fucked. It's not at the loss of losing a friend, but at the loss of the chance to truly see him as one. Mm. And that, whew, god damn, what a that's... way to start. Freerun has one of the- Yeah, that was fucking episode one. Like, what a heavy way to start this anime. Strongest opening chapters I've seen for a fantasy manga. The story comes charging out the gate, kicks you in the nutsack, and leaves you on the floor a dribbling mess before you can even make a D's ah. nuts joke. Chapter one could have easily been an emotional one-shot, but Freerun uses it as a springboard in order to begin her own journey. She doesn't know why such a short period of time had such a huge impact on her vast lifespan, and so she decides to retrace the steps her old party went on in hopes of learning more more about the friends she knew so little about. The passing of time is obviously a big theme in the story being told here, and a lot of it plays on how Freerun herself perceives time. Being an elf means your lifespan is functionally immortal compared to us humans. Every elf Compared to humans, I was like, are you actually immortal? Like, how long is her lifespan? Didn't she discuss with the Aizen too? I think she, I think she did. I think it was more like you should have gotten to know, like, I, I, I think you're just upset that you didn't get to know Himel as well. So now it's just like, I mean, the whole, the whole journey right now is finding like Flame's book so that we can do some kind of magic that allows us to talk to the dead. So right now we're just trying to talk to Himel. What are we going to say to him? Elf you meet, despite their appearances, would likely be leagues older than you. That's right. Elves are or just old. milfs. In disguise. They are, and that's why they're the perfect fucking lolly candidates. So they can have a lolly elf. It's like, Melody's actually 9,000 years old. Think about it for a second. What I love is that initially, we see time from her perspective. Years can pass in just a few panels. A page turn can result in a decade being lost, but that's what it just feels like to her. I mean, she pissed away 50 years like I pissed away 50 minutes playing a game of League of Legends. Now just imagine. How sad would you be if within that 50 minutes where your yeah. own 4 Teemo mid was flaming your useless Yi jungle while your bot lanes pick fucking Queen ADC and you were laning against Tom Kench top? This is getting way too personal. You could have used that time to get closer to a friend that cherished you deeply before they- If I look at the amount of like um, time I put into League of Legends and then I realize that if that time, if that month worth of my, time, my life could have been used to learn a skill, I don't know, hang out with friends, create all these different memories, I wonder what would happen with my life, man. He died. And he's back in. Run it back, baby. Hey, I'm already playing League. There's no going below rock bottom. A lifespan of a thousand plus years is so unimaginably long for humans to be able to comprehend. As Freerun goes on her journey, we see the effects of the different towns and villages that were saved by the hero's party and how the memories of what they did were being preserved. Because even if we were involved in an event as massive as saving oh, the wait, world wait, 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 wait. the demon... This, this, no, no, no. This is not a spoiler. No, this is the scene where Lugner met Freerun in the past. Yes, this is the flashback from his perspective. Human King. Life moves on after that. Stories will get passed down. Statues will persist. But living memories of the people who actually remember will only remember. That was hilarious. This one was the kid that tapped Freerun's ass back as a child. And now we come back and it's like, oh, wait. You're the kid that touched my ass, weren't you? Main for so long. You see, Freerun deal with problems that we would never even begin to think about. What happens when all of your friends pass away and there's no proof of what you did together aside from the memories you take with you? How do you even begin to build the same bonds when you know their entire lives will be just a blip in yours?
that's why I thought that she was subconsciously protecting herself from these feelings because it's like it's inevitable. You guys are all gonna die around me. And it's not worth the fucking struggle or the hassle, right? The emotional trauma is not worth it, so I'm gonna act distant. But then maybe you should just not take it so seriously and just enjoy and cherish the memories while you're on that journey. It's not so deep. In fact, just overthinking it will probably make you more distant. So in times like that, I don't know. I think everybody does this to an extent. People are like, they have, they understand that some people have limited time. I mean, when you're in high school, you don't think about this shit. But when you're out of high school, you'll start to realize that all your friends that you thought you knew in high school, they become very distant. People get very busy with their lives and people forget about these different memories and stuff we had. And the relationship, they, they go on different ways, which is not a bad thing. But then the more I started to kind of experience that, the more people came in and came out of my life, I became pretty numb to it to the point I was kind of like freer. And it's like, all right, I meet somebody. But it's like to my head, it's like, realistically, how much how significant is this person's time going to be to me? You know, am I going to actually be good friends with them? Is this going to be a very surface level relationship? Should I even bother putting in the effort to get to know this person? If I do inevitably, they'll probably go away in the future. Is, is that worth it? So to a certain degree, I could also relate to this show so much because of that subconscious barrier that I myself put in to the point where I feel like a lot of kids, they like enjoy these like parasocial interactions more than deep interactions, deep as in like, you know, actual like close friends of like 10 years and plus stuff like that. Because having parasocial interactions, just being in a discord chat, just being able to talk to other people, you'll notice that you can tell strangers more things about your life, more intimate things than you can to an actual friend in real life because it's easier because they are someone anonymous online. You know what I mean? It's a very interesting phenomenon. All right, this is getting a little depressing. Here's some yeah. action. Action is great. One upside of being in the party that defeated the Demon King is that Freerin kicks fucking ass. Mm. She was already strong enough when she helped defeat the Demon Lord, but now she has even more time to hone her magic. This was so cool. This is the prison scene. This was the prison scene where I think we took out that guy where he was trying to cut us. So like he had like the John Smith strings. And then Freeman was like, nah, I'm pretty fucking strong. And he's like, stronger than me? Like, stronger than Aura. Freeman, and he keeps getting stronger and more powerful. Freeman barely fears any monsters. Okay, I'm not looking at it, not looking at it, not looking at it. On their journey. Not Freeman looking at it. Freeman is not an action manga. Don't come here looking for that. Well, there are some fights here and there. And as the uh. manga goes on, an overarching plot line starts to form about taking down some of the remnants of the old Demon Lord's army. Where the manga shines is in its quieter, introspective moment. I like those moments. I get it. I understand it. They're important. It's the foundation of this show. But sometimes when I see the action happening like right now, like ever since episode five and six, we meet Stark the dragon, right? The Stark versus dragon was really sick. Now we're in this new arc against like Aura and stuff. Lugner showed up. There's so much more action going on. I'm so much more invested into the show. First four episodes, a little bit of a snooze fest. It's not a bad thing. That's what the show's premise is. But I just love it when the action is actually there. And now it's like, oh, we have an actual plot. We're trying to defeat the remnants of the Demon Lord. This is great. Even though Free Ren is probably older than any of us will ever come close to reaching, she still feels like a naive kid in a lot of ways. Oftentimes, she'll come off as detached or uncaring, and it's seeing her slowly come to terms with what she's been through, processing her experiences, and the beautiful moments that come out of it, is what is right at the heart of this tale. Mm. I don't want to be that guy that sits here and says, oh, it's kind of a slow burn, guys. Because it is a slow burn. The first four episodes is such a fucking slow burn. For reaction content, like, like, if you were to watch this by yourself, like Ancient Magus Spy, for example, another show that's like a slow burn, they're great to just watch it by yourself and get immersed. But, like, when you're thinking about reaction content, you want, like, exciting things to happen. So it's kind of hard to package a show like this and try to make it very entertaining when literally half the anime is just them just walking through just different fields and forests, which is cool, but still. To me, slow burn has always been the code for... You basically just said it's boring. Boring? Bad pacing, maybe? But in cursive, you pretentious hack. But what I found here is that there's such a unique feeling that leaves you whenever you finish a chapter, and that's because mm. of the atmosphere it creates. It's not a series that. So I think atmosphere is also another key, like a buzzword, right? Like slow burn. Atmosphere. What the fuck does that even mean? It just means like the overall vibe. Vibe is another fucking buzzword. What the fuck does that mean? It just means that. You know, when you see a show, you feel you're kind of immersed in it to the point where you can feel the environment of the show you feel that 
I don't know. You, you can feel them walking through the forest and it's a good time. Sucks you in and refuses to let go, but instead it blossoms and envelops you. You get lost in its ambience. Mm. Ambience? Ambience? Buzzword? Ambience. God damn it, I am that pretentious hack. Which is why I think this manga is screaming for an anime adaptation. It's rare to find a manga that is able to set... I wonder when we're gonna get an anime adaptation of Free Rain, guys. Maybe soon. Such a strong atmosphere, so I can only imagine what it would be like with sound effects, voice acting, music, and motion to help set that tone. Normally, when I read a manga, I put my Sonic shoes on, fucking Running of the 90s starts playing, because my eyes speed through these panels. But with Free Rain, there are several points with zero dialogue, zero reason to hold back, and yet I found myself slowing down my reading pace to just give time for the tale to sink in a bit more. That's right, and this is the Stark, you know, character, the Fisher scene, but there are a lot of moments where the anime is just like, there's no dialogue. It's just them doing something. They, they might be just in a cart, just like kind of sleeping. They might be just like walking over some logs in a forest. And I'm just like still watching, just glued to the screen. Why? More. Because it just felt right. There yeah. would be a line or two that would come out of nowhere and just stick with me. Like in one of these chapters, Free Ren meets a teenage boy named Stark, oh, who's yeah. the disciple of one of the members of her hero party, but also a coward. He's living in this village that's being terrorized by a dragon, and when Free Ren asks him for help to get rid of it, he reluctantly says yes, even though he's terrified. So when she asks him why he would risk his life protecting this village, he replies, it's simple. He's lived there for three years. Yeah, and then you know what she does? He says, because I lived here for three years. Free Ren's like, okay, so? Free Ren calls that ephemeral. Yeah. Stark calls it an eternity. And I don't know why, but that one little line reminded me just how different we view the passage of time as we get older, elf or not. The older you get, the more time feels like it speeds by, and I don't know why just that one line alone made me wallow in the moment for a second of just what time must feel like to a being like Free Ren. Damn, in the manga, that scene was subtly different. In, in the anime, that was like a very comical moment. She, she just like, so what? Three years? I don't give a fuck. But in the manga, it looked like there was a much more deeper meaning to it. And it's little bits like this that is the real beauty of this manga. When you read it, there won't be this big world-shattering plot twist or this dramatic character death that sticks out to you. Sometimes a character will just say a line that will make you pause for a bit. Or you'll turn a page and just see this panel where you just- Yo, this scene in the flashback, that was actually so hype. This, this is one of the best flashbacks about the demons, the explanation. About how this demon child thought it was right to kill the fucking chief. Take her, take his daughter, and offer the daughter to the mom of the mom whose daughter that the demon ate. So he's like, oh, you just, you were looking at me with, you know, cold eyes. So I thought maybe you wanted another replacement child. So here's the kid. Why are you mad at me? It's like this demon, they don't under fucking understand. It's, it's, that, that was some like actual like goosebumps, like cold shivering, like backstory. I love this backstory in the episode. You just have to sit there and absorbed for a while. Chapters are seeped in an air of melancholy. Free Ren would be reminiscing about the party and I would be feeling nostalgic over them even though I barely even knew them. But I suppose that's exactly how she felt too. We are told that elves in this world are essentially endangered species, largely coming from their lack of- Cause they're not horny. No one has sex when they're elves. They're, they're, they're just non-horny people. It, birth rates declining like crazy. Drives to seek out each other and breed, which makes sense. For a species, having such an overbreed of time can be a curse. Because when you have so much of it, how do you find the motivation to make the most of it? A story like Free Range. Ha! Huh. Now we're coming into an interesting part where Free Range's laziness. Her willingness to just fuck around and do nothing actually stems from the fact that there's so much abundance of time. You can definitely relate to that. I mean, when you're on like summer break from high school or there's a like college or whatnot, you think you have so much time, but you end up just like doing nothing because you're like, there's so much time. I don't really care. You get lazy. I never thought of it that way. I thought free was just like, I thought she was just like lazy for the sake of being lazy, but it's like, no, there's, there's so much actual like, deeper meaning to it. It shows us that it's not just about the amount of time that defines what will leave the biggest impact on your life, but the quality of how you choose to spend it. Every chapter starts off with a reminder of how many years it's been since Himmel's death. Because even though the time she spent with him on that journey was less than even the hundredth of her lifespan, that short amount of time left an imprint that will stay with her for the remainder of it. Not all time is of equal value, and just because you have more of it doesn't necessarily mean your life will have a richer experience. For someone like Freeray, 
Baron, one year is barely perceived. Ten years is merely a blip. A hundred years is a small phase, but even though someone like her possesses more time than any of us will ever come close to having, it can pass her by just as quickly if she's not careful about it. Because it doesn't matter if you live for ten years, fifty years, eighty years, or a thousand years. You can easily waste that time all the same. So keep that in mind next time you're about to hit that match accept button. Basically, just do more with your time. Oh, fuck's sake. Maybe in a thousand years' time, League of Tough will be actually good as Arcane. Hey Who guys, knows? Y'all know what to do? Give Giga a sub. A like his videos if you did. But Freerun, this is an anime that we started off watching a bit. You know, it's a little bit shaky. But right now, I'm willing to watch it all. We're currently... I'm, I'm on episode like 8, I think, on Patreon. Or episode 9. Basically, Farron has just... um. Shot the laser beam as Lugner. That was a really hype scene. Shit is getting hype. Fern is like floating and beyond the mood. And then there's another scene where Freerun is also in the mood. And it's like, oh my god, Freerun the Slayer. Don't don't worry, the reactions will show up.